a seat at the table for the Dragons. And we make history today, underway here at the inaugural Big Five Classic. The start is really important for Drexel. You know Villanova's going to come out hard after a loss. It's also the most athletic team that Drexel will have played. They have to withstand this early first four minutes here. Officiating crew Jeff Clark, Ed Corliss, and Mike Falau. They wanted to go to Williams. They quickly take it Mark Armstrong. Did you not, G, over 5,000 points career in this starting lineup for Kyle Neptune's guys. The Washington State transfer, T.J. Bomba, leaves that on the rim. You know, it's, it's a well-constructed roster. You could just look out there. A lot of strong bodies. And they're playing the villain over way. They'll have to improve their zone offense. Likely to see some zone defense by Drexel today. That's hurt going over early in the season. This is Lamar Odin Jr. Shot clock inside 10. Butler, and there's the start the Dragons are looking for. Yame Butler has him on the board. And there's the streamers. Big five tradition that typically would result in a technical foul, but not now. Well, it will. It but, will, actually. But the gentleman's agreement in That's the Big right. Five. I remember this. The, the opposition always steps over the line. Right now, you'll, you'll see the, the Drexel shooter step over the line, or the Villanova shooter step over the line to intentionally have a violation. But what a great tradition. So much fun. And I know something that you advocated for quite a bit during your coaching day. Listen, as I said, I'm from Chicago. We've had great players. When I was growing up, there was Isaiah Thomas, Mark McGuire, Terry Cummings, uh, Maurice Cheeks. The only people here will know about that. But there's nothing in college basketball like what you have in Philadelphia. And Zach Spiker getting to experience it as an official member for the first time with Drexel. Just had a look at Kyle Neptune. And what he calls his sophomore year following a legend to Jay Wright. So that, yep, that press for Drexel, not overly aggressive, more to take shot clock. And there's the defensive ability we talked about by Williams. He's a game changer. Dixon on the second chance. And Amari Williams averaging two blocks a game. You saw it there. Now you look at Villanova switching every screen. So interchangeable. Nice cut for the former walk-on house. Jump hook, no good. And Tyler Burton, the Richmond transfer, down with the rebound. That's looking to push. And look at that. Bamba on a, matched up against Williams at 6'10. Williams gets the stop. And now this is a problem. Dixon down low. Inside out, it goes to Burton, left it on the rim. The shot going over wants inside out, catch and shoot. Rhythm threes. And Villanova starting 0 for 4 in their home away from home down here at the Wells Fargo Center. That won't deter them, though. They, they work on their skill level. They believe in the system. They want to spread the floor and shoot it. Play inside out. One and done for Yame Butler and the Dragons. Bamba and Burton. Dixon setting up more. Well, I love this matchup. Williams against Dixon. That's two big timers. Shot clock again sliced in half. Moore sets up halfway down. And defensive rebound for the other Justin Moore. The one from Drexel who played at Archbishop Wood. Yeah, we don't want people to get confused. Two Justin Moores in this game and both point guards. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of Moore from Drexel and Moore from Villanova. And here's the Wildcats Moore with the steal. Good drop off and Dixon. And there are the cat streamers. So much fun. But evidently the officials have changed where they aren't requiring the... And then St. Joe's the other night on the main line. Zone defense. The common denominator for both the Quakers and Hawks. Villanova's press is more aggressive and where at the point is challenging. Because at 6'10", he could be disruptive at the point of that press. But Drexel has no problems. Odin Jr. one-on-one -on -one with the local kid Jordan Longino from Germantown Academy. House steps into it. And Dragons yet to buy one from the perimeter. Zach Slanker, who has big five roots, G. 
came up under Steve Donahue, the Penn head coach, for what was three straight seasons. They had a stronghold on the Ivy League at Cornell. Yeah, coach Donahue went to the Sweet 16 over there at Cornell. I played against that team, and it, there's the defense. Williams again, second block of the afternoon. He said he's one of the best in the country. Look at him switch down to more here. Center against point guard, and he can handle that mismatch. He's a special defender. Here's the next block. And a lot of bounce and steps for Burton. And that's the deterrence of Williams. He gets the block. Look at that. Well over the rim. And it's the timing. It's not just being big and being able to jump. It's timing the jump. That's something that you cannot teach. And that next travel, I guarantee you, Villanova's very aware now of Williams when they go to the basket. Here's the press. Where? Again, I mentioned the key to this press is can the person at the point be disruptive? Mikhail Bridges was the best I ever saw. But where at 6'10, he can do some of the same. One and a half now, a season and a half worth of Big Five games. How's this feel? It is a totally different perspective, but I'm really enjoying it. I really am. Uh, I really get to admire what all the coaches do and not have to think about competing against them, just admiring what they do. Like what Zach, what Zach Spiker's done with this team. Um, I, I've watched a couple of their games. I love where they are. So, Jay, a lot of people don't know. You started early in your career as a Drexel Dragon. Yes. Why don't you tell us some stories about the Dragon Wagon and your feelings <laughs> about Drexel being an official member here now? I was an assistant coach at Drexel University under Eddie Burke, and we had some great teams. Uh, Michael Anderson, who played in the NBA, and John Rankin, Todd Lehman. But we played um, Navy with um, David Robinson at the Palestra and beat them. And we all walked up, uh, we all walked up the street to Drexel, and, and everybody was out in the streets. It was one of my great memories in coaching. And Eddie Burke was a LaSalle grad, LaSalle basketball player. And we always thought Drexel should be a part of the Big Five back then. And so it's so great to see them here now. This is the way it should be. And what about your cats? Year two for, for your former assistant, Kyle Neptune. I, well, let's start there. How hard is it just, just to do this in terms of building your program back when, when you had to go and do it? It, it is really tough, and the Big Five games are, are really tough when you first start, too. When we, when we first started, I remember Penn was really good. St. Joe's was really good. We, we, were, we were getting beat all the time, and, and we were trying to put our program together. Right? These Big Five games are tough when you're early in your coaching career because it's hard to understand how well the coaches know you and how well they're going to be prepared for you. So what about your earlier experiences in the Big Five as an assistant with Coach Max? Tell me about some of those games and memories from being an assistant in the Big Five under the legendary Coach Massimino. We, we, would ha we had battles, man. And back then, the St. Joe Villanova game was... It was a hated rivalry. I, there, it's still a great rivalry. I don't feel that hatred is as deep. Back then, it, w it was deep. And uh, you had legendary Speedy Morris was coaching back then. It's a great defensive set here by the Cats. Housen on the kick out here at Longino. And Moore able to tap the rebound, but tapped it right out of bounds. What about coaching against the guy to your right? I, I hated coaching. I hated... I can it, say it, it now. usually went pretty well for you in the long run. <laughs> no. I hated coaching against, yeah. coach against John. Hate coach against Fran Dump. All these guys, we were such good friends, and it was like brothers. Like, But when you played against each other, you just you wanted to beat each other so bad because you respected each other so much. But afterwards, you really could root for everybody going through the season. John always was, we had brutal games, especially at LaSalle. Um... I remember Ryan Archidiakono lost to you guys. He had eight turnovers in his freshman year, and we we lost the game. I don't think he had eight turnovers like in his senior year for for like ten games. Well, I, I'm glad he did. I have to. Admit. <laughs> but uh, hey, another big five icon that you know we both love coaches and Coach Cheney is iconic. Any Coach Cheney memories? Oh man, we played we played Temple one year at 12 o'clock midnight because Coach Cheney didn't like the scheduling and refused to play us on any other date. So we had to play at 12.01 a.m. the first year at Temple. 
and was one of my favorite John Cheney stories. Someone it was at Temple, sold out. Someone threw a beer down on the court, and John Cheney took the microphone and said, hey, don't throw anything on the court because I know it's you Villanova fans up there. <laughs> you, you know why? what Bill Bradshaw said, how he knew it was a Villanova fan? Because he said there was still some beer left, and a Temple fan never would have thrown a can with beer left in it. <laughs> Jay, minus uh, Wednesday night on the main line with the result, what did that mean to you? You, you get, uh, obviously, the entranceway named after you right there at, at Finneran Pavilion, right way. It, it was it was amazing. You know, my, my wife went to Villanova. She's a cheerleader. Her whole family went to Villanova. I grew up a Villanova fan, assistant of Villanova. You know, to have your name there for forever is... It's really incomprehensible, to be honest, right now. I'm, I'm sure it'll sink in, but... I'm really grateful to everyone at Villanova, Father Peter Donahue and Mark Jackson, our AD. It was an amazing day. And a great game. you got to give the, the Hawks nice play great you. basketball. I think we're all realizing how good St. Joe is. You know, after them going down to, to Kentucky, they had that game won. And then yeah, company and playing like they did. And even their game against Penn. I mean, Penn's a really good team. They handled Penn pretty well. I think St. Joe's a really good basketball team. We talked about it top of the broadcast. How much does this turn, this setting, you know, the addition of Drexel, all that, you know, you get an outright champion night of. How much does this turn up the intensity? I think it's really important for the Big Five. I think I hear on national broadcasts, I hear people talking about, Hey, the Big Five Classic is this weekend. And I'm, I'm, we're going to get national exposure for this. And all these, it's time that the Big Five gets national attention, not just Philadelphia attention. And the Palestra is still the iconic basketball arena in our city. And you still play the games there with Penn and LaSalle play some games there. But this is one of the great arenas in our country. And I think these guys deserve to play in this. And this Big Five needs to be on a national scale in an, an arena like this. As much as I love the Plester, this is as good as it gets in any arena in the country. And I'm glad we're doing this. Brandon Housen whistling for the foul there. here with the shot clock inside 15. Good lean in and got it off the window. You know, guards posting up like McGee. Yeah. You had a lot to do with <laughs> people just starting to do that nationally. Yeah, I hate it. Now I hate when I see people doing it against us right now. They kind of, well, they learn from you. You can tell Zach was looking for the ISO on Brendan House and they found it with McGee and went right at him. Jay, what about your, your player development and, and just how well you had it going? I mean, we talked about a 25-game win streak for six years in the Big Five. When did you, you really know that, that you, you had a good thing? You know what? Honestly, you, you never really know. You, you're always, right, John? You always fear it can slip at any time. So you're always working at it like it's a fragile thing. But once you had guys like Ryan Archie Diakono teaching Jalen Brunson, Jalen Brunson teaching Colin Gillespie, guys teaching each other. That you get a little bit of comfortability with that. And what about the guy that just made the bucket, Eric Dixon, in terms of his four years? He, he's been amazing. He's worked so hard. You know, when he grew up here, went to Abington High School, followed all the Big Five games. His high school teammates went to Big Five schools. He takes pride in these games, and he's worked really hard on his body, on his game. And his mentality and his approach to being uh, a big-time player. And should add, he's out there with one of his high school teammates right now. As we're going the other way. Coach, always a pleasure. I know you're sleeping a lot better the night before games, Sal. Thanks for stopping by. Great to be with you guys. You're the best. Thanks, buddy. Villanova and Drexel tied up at nine. This is how much this can mean to the future of the program, guys. Yeah, great stuff, Taryn. And, and we talked about it at the top of the broadcast, how important their start was going to be. They've been grinding Villanova on possessions. Well, Aaron talked about how much it means to Drexel. And sometimes it can mean too much to get overexcited, to get a little tight. But Drexel off to the good start that they hope they will. And here's Monroe. We talked about Eric Dixon. That's his high school teammate. Dropped it off the window. Chuck Grasty, one of my former players, shot out. He coached them both at Abington High School. Yeah, Lucas Monroe had to go about a block and a half in terms of his transfer. So this 3-2 zone really covers the perimeter well, and that's really important. Throw the ball down well against the zone, but the steal. Jamie Bergens with the quick hands. 
the senior from the Netherlands. Bounce game for Kobe McGee. Drexel 45%, five of their first 11 here out of the gate. And Armstrong gets the deflection. So two things, man or zone, Villanova needs to go inside. But man or zone, they need to crowd Dixon in the paint. You notice that's not a double team. You just see bodies coming towards him. Three people in his vicinity. Monroe with a little tap out. And they want to crowd him so he just doesn't have room to operate. Man or zone. And here's Monroe's soft touch. Left it up there. And Justin Moore for Villanova. Dixon steps in. And Monroe very active here these last couple possessions. Well, as a pen transfer, he's played in a bunch of these going over games, so he knows what the intense is like. And inside out three by Bergens, and Drexel has absolutely settled into this game. Largest lead of this early afternoon for Zach Spiker's guys. Burton trying to answer. Can't. Going over one for nine from the perimeter. Bergens and McGee. Monroe. Mate Okrus and Amari Williams, who has the ball, face it up on Dixon. And you see Bamba in the gap, crowding Williams. And the quickness of Dixon. Dixon's quick and strong. Williams more of a defender. And we see the defense. How many 6'10 guys can pick someone's pocket in transition? Not many. He's not a go-to guy offensively, but defensively, he has some wow factor. And second Drexel steal, and we're tied up. Arrow will go back over to the Cats. Inside out basketball. Perfect in rhythm for me. The most efficient three in basketball is catch and shoot, not off the screen, not off the dribble. That's the kind of three you want. Now, Villanova, for years they've shot a lot of threes. They aren't shooting them well lately and now you got to go to feel a little bit do you, do you turn down some of those threes to make sure you get the ball inside or get more paint touches and that's where Villanova has the system but can they get the feel how do they balance the inside game with the outside Wildcats with as many turnovers as they do field goals or peace more little two game Dixon sniping the three knocks it down Dixon as a small ball center is an impossible matchup because with bigger guys on him and all those guards are composed he gets open looks like that as half Villanova's points seven of the 14 for Dixon who teamed with Monroe on several district championship teams at Abington actually it was Monroe as Odin takes this jumper and cans it that fouled out late in the district game district title game and uh, Dixon was the one who had to pick him up but Lucas returned the favor by picking his pocket here in this game four point Drexel lead that's where you want to get the ball against the zone Dixon 12 to shoot operating on that left block and Burton aggressive second chance and the physicality of Odin. This is a very strong, older, mature Drexel team. They're not going to get muscles. Takes his shoulder and in. Williams says no for a third time. It was not hyperbole in the opening that Williams is one of the best defenders in the country. Just need more this day. Odin, one on one in on Dixon. Too much. Burton down with a rebound. Both teams are disciplined, not following. Being vertical, defending with their chest. Extra pass, Burton, high archer. And second chance, thanks to Longino. And a foul on Drexel. Back and forth we go with the Big Five Classic, G. Dixon, small ball center, knocking it down. On the other end, Odin on the switch, makes the tough two. Dragons up four. Well, looks like our surgery patient is feeling better today. And then they have the anchor down low with wings. This, this is a high-level defensive team. They came in two or more blocks in five of his seven games. The only has three in the first half. Moore rising up. It's barely the rim and some of the glass. The yeah, threes off the dribble, much less efficient than threes off the catch. The Roman Catholic product to keep hard. On the floor for Nova, along with Jordan Longino, Lance Ware, Moore, and Brendan Housen. Step through for Moore. 
And over to Drexel, another empty trip. And that place not as spectacular as Williams blocks, but Williams jumps out on the guard, stops the penetration, recovers back to his man. If an NBA scout is watching him defensively, they're looking at all the other things he does in addition to blocking shots. Bounce game for the other boy. They're guarding each other right now. Justin on Justin. In and out for Drexel. Housen off the curl. So well defended by Drexel's Justin Moore. Made Housen rush that. If Housen's in rhythm, that shot's going down. But Villanova needing the rush shots. Drexel is there on the catch with high hands. Two for 13 on twos for Villanova. Three for nine. Or excuse me. It's three for nine on twos. And a two for 13 on threes. Yeah, big time one on one stop by Longino. Moore lost it here. Hart, pick and roll game. Had wear and still took it himself. And foul on the Dragons. Fouls on Justin Moore. That's his first. Team's fourth. Yeah. Sometimes the game just comes down to one-on-one. -on -one. You drop a play, it doesn't work, and now it's a one-on-one -on -one battle in that one. Longino clearly winning it. Staying in front, going straight up, getting the block, holding his ground. Textbook one-on-one -on -one defense. So the line goes Hakeem Hart. Now well, Neptune's got his 0 for 2 on the day. Then dream all of our Big Five games today, as well as every one of our Phillies, Flyers, and Sixers telecasts with the NBC Sports app. Download now and never miss a moment. The three-point shooting in this game has not been as good as certainly Villanova would like, but the defense has been good, and part of it is not fouling. Very few free throws in this game. That's just Villanova's fourth, and Drexel hasn't been to the line yet. These teams are well taught how to play physically without fouling. Fouling is not good defense, and these teams don't foul much. And the perimeter in the foul line. That was how Villanova got its points under Jay Wright. That's how they do it under Kyle Neptune. Moore penetrate pitch. How steps into the three. Cans it. Beautiful execution. Backdoor cut. That Villanova help is in the rim. At the rim. That means the opposite corner is open. Skip it. Five for Luke House. Takes it a miss at this end. Williams out ahead. And just couldn't finish off the shin and out of bounds. So this is beautiful backdoor cut. There's the backdoor. There's the help at the rim off the opposite corner. And it's recognized immediately. Ball doesn't touch the ground. Moore delivering the house. And he sends it home. House sends it home. That's right. <laughs> and big shot here for Burke to bring this back to a one-possession game. And, and Villanova, they believe in their shooting and skill development. They'll keep shooting. As I said, the question is, at which point they get a little bit of a feel like, hey, let's force the issue inside a little bit. Shot clock down to 10 for House. Butler, who's going to be the bailout? House wants a second. Yes, sir. Cannot play better defense than what Hart played on that. Hart was in his face. I'm surprised House got it off. The Archbishop Carroll grad, 8 of the 22 for Drexel Dragons, 4 of 7 from the perimeter. It's not really their forte. There's the defensive change up the zone again. Going over. Can they get it inside against the zone? There they go. Good move. Dixon, and yep, there's your bread and butter. Get to the free throw line. But Drexel enjoying its largest lead of the first half here at the Big Five Classic. Been a big difference for them. So the next three and a half minutes, this whole game, every minute is critical. But here's what's critical about this next three and a half. I asked Coach Spiker yesterday, what does a Drexel win look like? And he said, a halftime score in the 20s. So there you have it. If they could go in at halftime and continue defending the way they are, it, it sets up the second half well for the Dragons. Well, and that's the twist that you get, too, with this new format. 
these two teams otherwise probably wouldn't be playing. I, I do think as intense as the games normally are, there's just more importance on them all now. In the pods, you need to win to make it to the championship game, and now there's a placing at stake, and you know, these are proud programs. Those placings matter to them. Oh, and if you're Drexel, how often would you get a neutral site game against Villanova? Yeah. Great defense by Villanova, Justin Moore. On the Dragons, Justin Moore. Jordan Longino is back in for Villanova. And Villanova, we saw Longino win a one-on-one -on -one battle, and there you see Moore winning a one-on-one -on -one battle. But here's another key thing. Drexel's not turning the ball over. The athleticism and physicality is not affecting their execution. Bamba rising. Left in the middle of the lane. And the rebound by Garfield Turner for Drexel. Inside, three minutes left. Here in our opening 20. Drexel opening up 47% from the floor. And it's second largest lead. And Moore might have gotten a hand on that for Nova, but it'll stay here. Missed shot, but still, good patience by Drexel. They get a good shot. It's not a turnover. They use shot clock. So, again, tempo continues to be in their favor and they are not being disrupted into any flurries of turnovers and getting going over out in transition they're forcing going over to play in the half court justin moore dixon Housen, burton and bamba the five for the cats Moore, good post position and had the size advantage on the other Justin Moore. I, I'm surprised Drexel did not double team that. Moore is that difficult of a matchup down low. And one on one, he's going to get uh, score, get fouled an awful lot. I look in the future to mix that up. A reminder to stay tuned for our Ford halftime report. Amy Fadula, Mark Jackson, Coach Lynham. Bring it down this game and highlights analysis and stats. Couple years uh, in, in the Big Five for Mark Jackson. Had a pretty good run as a player. One of the best Big Five acceptance speeches I've ever heard. And uh, we actually got it videotaped and showed it to all of our big man recruits. And uh, it was really inspirational to guys like Terrell Wright and Steve Zach. And uh, I think I mentioned that uh, to Marcus. We crossed paths. And you heard Coach Line about our pregame. Nothing compares to these. No city in the country. And say that they have the basketball tradition in the college game that Philadelphia has. No turnover against the press and executing their sets, getting the tempo where they want it and keeping Drexel in the half court. Stepping into the three. Perkins had hit his first one, not that time. Again, you prefer to score for Drexel, but again, you didn't get a turnover leading the transition and use clock. Dixon trying to muscle. Two game with Longino. Pull up for the mid range. Villanova with it one. Yeah, Villanova, they've missed shots. They've had trouble attacking zones. But this is a mentally tough program. And being behind is not going to affect the way they play. Four now for Longino. It was part of an injury plate year for the Cats last year. down to eight and tough Williams coming across to flush it home Time out, Drexel. Amari Williams bringing down the house for his first bucket of the afternoon tough thing about helping is you leave someone open and sometimes it's not just leaving someone open for a bucket I didn't do it in all seriousness I, I, I should have been a little bit more under control but this is a passionate game and this is a rock fight right here this is classic Philly defensive struggle two teams who want it awfully bad anybody who loves this can admire and understand that passion Dixon Given Nova its first lead. In and out, wide open, and that's because Moore saw Williams was going to double team him. They weren't going to let Moore score twice in a row in the post. Williams mismatch with Justin Moore. That's my Jalen Hurt special. That's literally an option play. Williams has the choice to hand it off or keep it. He chooses the keeper to take it all the way. Yeah, big weekend for games in Philly. Like yeah. that Hurts reference. Hopefully they execute tomorrow next door. 
Moore, shot clock inside 10, four second and change differential. Dixon got hit, score it, plus one. Chance for a four point play. I like double teaming more. The difficulty is it leaves Dixon open. You close out to contest, but that is, I'm gonna use another football example. Right here, this is like you're going to block a kick, but you can't run into the kicker. You have to have body control. You gotta contest the shot. You can fly at him, but you gotta fly by him. You can't run him over. Justin Moore. We talked about Eric Dixon with Jay Wright earlier. Okay, first year on the main line had trouble getting on the floor now one of the the, the best bigs that they've had in the last few years he, he, he's a potential all-american as i said the way he's utilized he's an impossible matchup and four-point play Square, but Drexel with a chance to take a lead into the break. You said it with Zach Spiker. Scores in the yeah. 20s. Yeah. They're, they're, What's in, it look like? they're in position to be in position. Now, if you're going over, the biggest thing you want to do is not foul here. Inside 10 seconds, shot clock off. Four. And Armstrong. Although they have fouls to give, so it's not like they got put on the line. Mark Armstrong is first. Third. Yeah, only the 13th foul. So Williams coming in is a lob threat on the out of bounds under play. Luke House to trigger the inbounds. Kyle Nipton counters with TJ Bamba. Justin Moore sits. Here's Williams with time, jump hook. And that's how we end. Here at the Wells Fargo Center, Drexel by one. Alongside Dr. John Giannini, Matt Martucci, our sideline reporter, Taryn Hatcher. Now, Gene, I think we know what Villanova has to do in terms of getting the lead for the first time today. What does Drexel have to do to maintain their start? They need to continue exactly what they're doing. I don't think they can do much more. And that's the way to start for Yabe Butler. So the first 15 seconds of that possession was false motion. They were moving around, but they weren't trying to score. They controlled tempo, got a great shot at the end. And Bamba goes right to the cup. Ed Corliss says goal 10 plus one. And Villanova with the quick answer. Drexel, ball, the ball barely goes through the net. And Nova gets it throughout and going. Well, he got it right at the top on that. And this year, officials are allowed to review that to determine whether or not they made the correct call. And quickly, Jeff Clark and Ed Corliss may have make a decision and say two shots. Which means they said it's not goaltending. If it were goaltending, if they would have confirmed goaltending, it would have been one shot. So that's interesting. After a potential goaltending or basket interference call and a foul is called, they can go back and review it to make sure the right number of shots are issued. So by saying it's two shots, they're saying that, yeah, it would, the foul occurred, but the block itself was good. It won't count, though, because of the foul. And maybe this free throw line trip gets T.J. Bamba going. Bamba double figure score Washington State and one of the experienced talented physical athletic complete players on this going over roster and here's the press Burton aggressive on the top of it in some ways though that press works a little bit in Drexel's favor because it does slow down the tempo when they break it It's still by two. Deep at the shot clock, though. Justin Moore. And cans it. Justin Moore. Drexel's confidence growing. Sometimes you could see teams grow within a game. You see that with Drexel. And there's a steal off their press. Butler, the one who comes away with it. To your point, Moore was shooting 15% from three coming in. 1-5. Only his fourth made triple of the year. Jamie Bergens did the same thing for the Dragons in the first half. Struggling coming in, knocked down a big shot. Moore using it, elbow. Dixon down with the rebound. 
Largest lead of the afternoon for Drexel has been six. Bamba. Got his own miss. Williams, the fourth block. House, secondary break. Odin down with the rebound. Shot clock back to 20. House, again. Just got evicted there on two shots. Good basketball by Drexel. Two good looks from three. Another spectacular block by Williams. Justin Moore on Justin Moore. So that, that's the to my, win the battle. That's to my point. Villanova is so physical. All you got to do is look at them, and you could tell this is a weight room made team. Impose your will. Force the issue. Force it inside if you need to. Go to the line. Second field and first field will make it for Moore to go with a couple of free throws. The other ball. Really tough shot. That's what's called a hostage dribble. Once he got the other Justin Moore on his back, with the dribble, he effectively boxed him out while dribbling to free himself up for that shot. Dueling Justin Moore's. Five now for Drexel's ball. House gets the block here on the Nova Moore. Now to Villanova, George Longino. Yeah, more sizing up Burton, the bigger wing, and that was well defended off the dribble. And then Amari Williams, the human eraser out here. Can't teach that. Well, and Drexel's Justin Moore knows a thing or two about these games. Dad Malik played for the late John Cheney for a year at Temple. Other Justin Moore gets blocked here. Tell you what. Shot clock down to four, here, G. Longino. Drexel is really contesting shots at the rim, being vertical. Foul's not being called up near the rim on a lot of those Villanova drives. But what did you and I talk about? Early on, you have to play like you belong. And then, then maybe some of the officiating goes your way, too. Butler spins that in with the right New largest lead for Drexel. Drexel's making some tough shots. On that highlight, we saw Moore's three off the dribble, hand in the face, and that's a scoop shot falling away from the basket. Drexel's confidence continuing to grow. Bamba, 18-footer. Speaking of confidence, needed that. Curious to see just how much going over now forces the issue. Backing people down, getting the ball to the rim. Four now for T.J. Bamba, his first field goal. Drexel is physical enough where they don't have to make every game a shooting contest. They can make it, especially against the mid-major opponent, a, a physical game if they choose. Odin trying to do just that. Just the turnaround. Hart ripping away the rebound. Terrific rebound by Hart. Four and where? Longino, Bamba, and Hart. Kyle uh, next to Wildcats. Foul on Drexel, says Ed Corliss. It's on Odin Jr. Deeper we get to this game, lead gets bigger for the Dragons. The scoop shot, a little bit of a circus shot, and the drags will, Dragons will take that. Up five right now. Butler with the puck. I know where the treasure of Foggy Mountain is, and I think we should go get it. Your last game against Lafayette. Uh, ended up with only 21 points at the break. But we're able to come back with a big second half. And now trying to carry it over. Longino forced the issue. He'll go to the line. Good choice of words, Matt. That was a clear intent to That's post up, get the ball to the rim. So many strong guys on this Villanova team that can back people down. And correction call on the floor. Villanova only two for its first seven. Here in this first five minutes of the second half. Longino. Five to shoot. Great spin on the block. Longino, Bamba, Moore. So many guys that can back you down and post up. Everyone on this Villanova team can post and shoot threes and switch on defense. They develop the whole player. Besides Housen, who's a three-point specialist, no other specialist really on this team. 
Monroe wheeling, score it in one. Lucas Monroe. Moore with the back down. Made so popular by Jalen Brunson and Villanova in the past. That's Monroe over there, the pen transfer. Man, he just... So, when you back someone down, it's a battle for position. If you can get two feet in the paint, you can go into a strong move. Defensively, you got to wall people up, keep people out of the paint. But Monroe's an expert in this game because he's a big, strong guard. He looks like a Villanova guard out there. He has the physicality to post and match up with the Wildcats. Yeah, Zach Spiker apparently used to see him at the coffee shop every morning. Drexel and Pan are so close. And then because of the Ivy League's rules that graduate students can't play basketball, that's why he's at Drexel. Good find here. Ware couldn't finish. Got his own offensive rebound off the window. Terrific second effort by Ware. And another shot to Villanova at the rim. Playing just over the river from where he went to high school in Camden. One possession game, and Kyle Neptune going to get a trio of substitutions. Burton, Dixon, and Bamba all at the scorer's table for Nova at the next horn. Monroe almost got it stripped. Seven on the shot clock for Drexel. Three starters coming back in. Fresh, where gave really quality minutes. Offensive rebound, heart rebounded. Juan Gino had the nice post up, so multiple contributors, starters back in the game for the Wildcats, fresh. Lucas and Amari Williams back in projection. If you can find a way to win this game by getting post touches and not necessarily play to your identity, Nova, that's a good thing, right? It, it, it's all about feel. Like, you, you, you have a certain game plan, and there's the end of the shot clock. And Williams just says, happy birthday. Wow, I'll tell you, as an opposing coach, it's not a good feeling. And now the 3-2 zone. This gave Villanova trouble against St. Joe's. Let's see if they can get the ball inside against the zone. This 3-2 really defends the three-point arc well. Try to match at this end. Bomba can't. Good crash by Burton. Ran out of real estate. Out of bounds. End of the shot clock. Your 6'10 center's in trouble, and he banks it home. I mean, not much to say on that. Obviously, a lot of work, and occasionally you take good luck. If you take bad luck, accept the good luck. How about, how about the backup, like it was going down from him? Yeah, he had fun with that. And that actually is a sign of how relaxed Drexel has gotten in that, this That's game. a great point, yeah. And Coach Biker was afraid they'd be tight just because of what a great opportunity this is. Second largest lead. It's been as many as seven. Williams right into Dixon. So I have not seen that happen very often. Another center go at Dixon and win the collision and back Dixon down. I, Dixon almost always holds his ground and takes the charge in that situation. Williams having his best offensive game of the year. If not numerically, certainly in terms of asserting himself. Second personal on Eric Dixon. Well, Bomb is chasing house all over the place. And doing a good job. Shot clock inside 10. Bergen's going to have to be the bailout. Good contest by Housen. Gets the rebound. And Bergen stolen right back. Eighth Drexel turnover for Zach Spiker and his guys. If you just happen to tune in, Villanova has not led this entire game. Drexel basically from the jump. Drexel back in their 3-2. Again, the three players on top make it hard to get a good three. And the beautiful thing, they got Monroe and Williams down low. If two guys can cover corner to corner, it's them. Now, fourth position to get And there it is. Traps it right over top of Monroe. In their previous outings against zone defensive teams, I'm not sure going over got the ball inside as much as they liked. They're correcting that here today. 14 now for Eric Dixon, which is good enough for game high. Going over his defense is really stepping up. Williams, a little Euro. 
And anytime you see a defensive field goal percentage in the 30s, it's elite. And Villanova's defensive field goal percentage is in the 30s against the killer schedule. Burton's might have flopped there. Burton off the pick and roll. They have followed his own shot. And Monroe definitely just traveled. Traveled. Player development, G. Eric Dixon, better and better every year. Dixon down low, it's almost automatic. Attack the zone. The holidays are hectic. Legitimate academics, coaches that respect each other, and it's, it, again, by far the best college basketball city in America, and we just enjoy it all day. We're spoiled, definitely. Longino. Dixon with seven to shoot. Good bounce right around Williams and one. Dixon, we talked about it. An impossible matchup. Even the spectacular defender Williams gets beat by Dixon's quickness, and Dixon's strong enough to absorb the contact. That's a heck of a heavyweight matchup. Williams defensively against Dixon on offense. Absorbing the contact. And Dixon's quick. He's totally transformed his body during his time at Villanova. Again, small ball center. You can't really guard him outside. He's going to get open threes. He can drive big guys. And we've seen down low, he can muscle with anyone. And it doesn't hurt that he's an almost 83% free throw shooter. And he's skilled. Yeah. He's skilled, strong, quick, really hard to figure out how to guard him. Set the feet, Odin at this end. Williams, big offensive board, right to the rack. That is assertive. It's impressive. I've watched Amari Williams for a few years now. That might be the singular best offensive play I've seen him make. I've seen him do great things defensively. That was something to behold. How about this stat line? Dixon with the miss. Nine points, four rebounds, two assists, four blocks today. Amari Williams. Drexel by a possession. If he can learn to get deeper position in the post, that would be the next thing to add to his game. Bergen's happy feet here. Drexel turnover. So, again, Justin potential All-American in Dixon. And Williams jumps over him, gets it in traffic, out muscles one of the strongest big men in the country, goes over, and finishes with force. It, it, it doesn't get much better than that. I'm sure Mark Jackson's really pleased with that one. I'll never forget it. Big guys who like to be big guys. Williams liked doing that. And what a story for him, the way they found him. Went over to England to recruit Mateo Cruz, and then noticed that they were teammates. But hey, we want that guy too. Burton in and out for Nova. See, there's a three without a paint touch, and that's where we talk about maybe forcing the issue in these situations for going over. Moore left Longino and got the turnaround. Drexel's determined to win this game. But regardless of the score, this is going to be a different Drexel team leaving Wells Fargo. They're more confident. They're deeper. And it's going to show up in future games as well. Yeah, to your point, G, only one win in this series for the Dragons. Burton, don't miss, and Longino flying high. We'll stay at this end. Here's more getting the paint. And Longino just falls. And he gets a little bit of a freebie in there. But that one Drexel win turned out to be in a heartbreaking year for Drexel. Bruiser Flint's team won at Villanova, at Syracuse, and at Creighton. Did not get in a large bid, and I'm still angry about that. And you want to make yourself feel a little older as Housen with the catch and miss. 06 07 was when that came. Bashir Mason, who's now the head coach at St. Peter's, had a big game in 21 in the win. And he was a great defender. Listen, here's the ball and big time defense still lives. Turner shedding the contact back to the largest lead. Turner, the finisher, shooting 83% this year. 
He's 20 for 24 now on the year, but more his point guard sets him up nicely, and he finishes the dish. Nine of the ten guys that Zach Spiker's rotation today have scored. You need a paint touch now for Villanova, and it should do that every possession. Longino, deep into the teeth, good turnaround. There you go. Multiple dribble post candidates. Dixon posting up deep, lots of ways to attack that zone at the rim. Coming up on the eight-minute mark. Dixon's doing a great job cutting off that high post entry, disrupting the Drexel offense. But they're being patient, not turning it over. They're willing to go deep in the clock. And they are again. And more little fastball there to the baseline. Fourth turnover of this half, 11th one of the game. For Zach Spiker and the Dragons. But still have not given up the lead. And they all come together to do it. And it, it, it's a little bit awkward for the teams in the tournament, but no one would miss it because it's so important to the coaches and many, many, many others. Yeah, I was going to say, what was that morning like during, uh, it was before this week's 16 run. You didn't know you were going on it, but that must have been something. Yeah, that's great. Takes to shoot here. Art can't convert. Dixon trying to fight for the rebound. Justin Moore tracks it down for Drexel. Splits it. House looking for a third. And got the bounce. That was some soft touch. You don't normally see a 28-foot shot bounce on the rim that softly. 11 now for Luke House on three made threes. Drexel's knocked down eight triples for a team that came in shooting under 24. Housing can't match. Hart leaning in, big offensive rebound. Great will by Hart and Dixon fighting for that rebound, but that was another three without a clean touch. Four for 23 today from the perimeter. The Kyle Neptune's team. So you believe in spreading the court and great skill level on this going over team. And like Drexel, regression for the mean. They're going to have some hot shooting nights. That's a really tough shot over there. And then the putback by McGee. Kobe McGee. Wow. Even the hairball kind of works out for Drexel, ending up being more of a pass than what would normally be a going over stop. Second one for the Lehigh Valley native from Allentown, Kobe McGee. But they, they, they've got to post up Dixon. There you go. Something good will happen. Got Turner up in the air. Great step through. Excellent footwork. So many teams see his own and stop doing what they normally do against the man. Regardless of what defense the opponent's in, you should have the same attack philosophy. Maybe different X's and O's, but you want to still get the ball to a guy like this. 16 now for him to pace all scores. Is there a late villain overrun? Odin, seven to shoot. Got the screen from Turner and cashed in. Dixon got a piece of that. That was partially blocked. To say that Drexel's making difficult shots is a great understatement. Now, their defense is terrific, but offensively, things are really going their way. Good balance for them. Five different players, seven or more. Justin Moore, tough three-point shot, second chance. Longino, ain't got it. No one's better than that than going over. Offensive rebound, kick out three when the defense is not set. 11 now for Jordan Longino. Back to two possessions inside five minutes here in the inaugural Big Five Classic. Going over in zone right now. Alongside Dr. John Giannini, Matt Martucci, Terran Hatcher is our sideline reporter. What a great start to the day. Back to man. Good post position, Turner, reverse layup, ran out of real estate, rebound for Justin Moore. Longino, one more. Housen, straightening, and off target. Rebound got knocked from Hart right to House. Housen would be the one person I wouldn't mind going over taking the quick three right now because that is his role. Zone again. Moore. 
And got caught up. Turner wasn't ready for it. Threw it away. Good hands for the Dragons. Longino, does he have another? Hart, big board off the window. One possession game. Hart has been all over the glass. Getting rebounds, keeping them alive. Terrific effort. Temple and the Big Five's most played matchup for the title. Matt, you mentioned in the opening, these pod games were intense. This game's intense. City basketball at its best. You won't find this Chicago, New York, anywhere else. Williams here inside 10. Nice stop by Ware. Winning the one-on-one -on -one battle. Villanova has not led. Bamba right to the cup. Ware crashing the offensive glass. Possession rescue. Ware and Hart making big offensive rebound effort plays. Back down coming. We'll see if the double comes. More one-on-one -on -one with House. Steps through. Tough turnaround. House forced the fadeaway. You don't normally see that from Moore. House playing strong in post defense, walling up. And Drexel go wire to wire, or will it be Villanova? House left it short. And rebound to Hart. Armstrong penetrating pitch hard. I'm, I'm sorry, inside to Dixon and try to, and there they go into the zone. They disguised it as man. You still got to go inside. Got to get the ball to the logo. They're going to try to get it to Moore. Be patient. Moore's going to be open. Shot clock down to eight. Moore popped up. Tough shot. Offensive rebound. Dixon. And a pair of shots coming. They got the person that they wanted to. They wanted to get it to Moore at the logo. He had to come out a little bit further. But right there, you see Dixon just establishing position, carving out space. Because he posted up so hard and he was being fronted, he had natural position. We've been tied for about four and a half minutes this afternoon. Well, I, I really like Coach Spiker showing man and then dropping into the zone. Both coaches in a chess match. The coach Neptune getting the ball to more where he wanted to. And sometimes it's not about the player or about the player. It's about the player getting him to the right guy. Dixon brings nobody within one. Almost 34 minutes worth of lead time for Drexel. Do the Dragons have enough in them to close? Odin with the shot clock at 10. Williams one-on-one -on -one with Dixon. Off the window. Williams offensive assertiveness at the highest level I've seen. Give him 11. Only two double-finger scores for the Dragons. He's one of them. Get it to the logo and play from there. Longino, one point game again. And timeout, Kyle Neptune. Kyle Neptune visibly trying to encourage his guys coming out of that last timeout. Down to a minute to open up this triple header. And Moore commits only the Another third Justin team foul. First team, third. See, if Drexel goes under that 40-second mark, they may not get a great last possession. Ashley Howard, Villanova assistant, just comes down to remind Kyle Neptune, hey, we have more fouls to give. So I'm not sure you want to do that. I think you just want to get a stop and get the ball back. 28-second differential shot in game clock. Drexel up for the entire game. The exception of about four minutes worth of time. Dixon couldn't hold on. And Kyle Neptune says, what about the contact? 
Good defense by Dixon. And I would believe that Coach Neptune's glad that's a no call. Only six seconds left now. As I said, going over, you don't want to follow. Get a stop, get the ball back. Williams shoveling the ball, the pick and roll, and fouled. The officials will review this to see if it was flagrant. Now's on George Longino. The eye test live told me it was just a normal hard basketball play. Perfect pass. Yeah, that was just a basketball play. Going for the ball. And honestly, if Longino doesn't come, come down on his back, he's got a clean block. He's got a clean block. Williams 71% on the year. The free throw was about as good as you can have without it going in. That was in and out, rattling. Only the second trip all day for the Dragons. Bill Orr is outstanding defensively. Both these teams have been. One of two. Tie or take the lead for Nova. I want to go quick if I'm Nova, because if I miss the shot, I want a chance at an offensive rebound and maybe a foul and extend the game. Kyle Neptune going to put it in his guy's hands. Shot clock and game clock almost aligned. Longino, the back down. Drew in the double. Bamba, one more drop off. Ten to shoot. Dixon. Hart, they're down to seven. And timeout, Kyle Neptune with 6.7. I'm going over his best. You can get to the line, too, if you're Nova. More. Five. Got a block. 